Which BPMN Workflow Management System should you buy? Axon Ivy, Bonita Soft or Camunda? Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and I make videos on business process automation. Today I will make a functional comparison of the three workflow management systems Axon Ivy, Bonita Soft and Camunda. Who is this video for? This video is for you if you are on the verge of selecting a workflow management system and you have not yet made your final decision. This video consists of four parts. First, I will talk about why we use the resource patterns of the workflow patterns initiative to functionally compare workflow management systems. Second, I will talk about why we chose the specific three systems here in this analysis. And third, I will talk about the method, how we did the evaluation. And fourth, I will present the results, of course. The full details of this analysis can be found in the master's thesis of Daniel Reis, which I have put in the supplementary material. And there is a link to this in the description below. So functional comparison of workflow management systems. If you look on the internet or if you look in scientific articles, about the comparison of workflow management systems, you very often find that non-functional criteria are used. Like, for example, how big is the vendor or how many users are there, how active is the open source community, and so on and so forth. A functional comparison is hard because of the complexity of these systems. Yet it is very important because if you choose the wrong system, and you later find out that it doesn't have the right features to support your business processes, you are on a long way into a project. And if this fails, this may be the end of workflow management or workflow automation for your company for a certain time. So you better pick the right one in the first place. So the workflow patterns that have been published in the definitive guide in 2016 are a very good means of comparing workflow management systems. There are three perspectives, namely the control flow perspective, the data perspective, and the resource perspective. The control flow perspective is the one about which tasks are in which order in the workflow specification, about splits and joins and topics like that. The data perspective is about how data or data types are handled, their scopes, their visibility, and topics like that. And the resource perspective is about who will receive the work items, how are work items distributed to the users or the participants of the workflow management system. Why did we choose the resource perspective for this comparison? Well, the data perspective is quite complex. And if you look at the data patterns in the book, you will see that it's not so easy to directly come up with a comparison that is useful in practice if you compare workflow management systems. The control flow perspective is well supported by the BPMN standard. We have a playlist on this channel and I'll put a link in the description below where we evaluate the control flow perspective of BPMN and of Camunda. And in this analysis, the result is that the BPMN standard very well supports the control flow patterns. And also Camunda is very good on the control flow patterns. And although we haven't tested it yet, we assume that other workflow management tools that are BPMN compliant also support the control flow patterns quite well in this sense. But the resource perspective is a completely different matter. And the resource perspective is about how work is distributed to users. Is it a push or a pull mechanism? Or are there certain strategies like round robin or uh, four eyes principles supported? And what about the visibility of work items and so on and so forth? And this is something that does not appear in the BPMN standard at all. The only thing that's there in the BPMN standard are swim lanes. And this is not very much if you look at all these 43 resource patterns in the workflow patterns initiative. So that's why 
we chose the resource perspective. How did we choose the three contestants today? Well, the first criterion was that we wanted to have systems that are BPMN compliant. The second one is that there should be at least an open source variant of the system or a free version of the system available. And we took the systems from the Forrester Wave Report. So what is the evaluation method? We tried to implement each of the 43 resource patterns with each of the systems. If the pattern was directly supported by the system, we gave full points. If there was a little workaround to do or one or two lines of code, there was a medium number of points given. And if there was no way of realizing the feature or the pattern, uh, or you would have to write code for the complete pattern, we gave zero points. And when there were difficulties, when there were doubts, we asked in the respective forums, and sometimes we received some hints from the forums that helped us implement the pattern. And in many cases, there was just the answer that it wasn't possible, or sometimes there was no answer at all. So basically, we have these three uh, values, high, medium, and low. I think you have been waiting for the results. I will present the results structured by the categories of the resource patterns. And I will show you each category and talk about the category itself. And you will see the detailed results, but I will not go into the details. That would take too long. And then I will give you an overview evaluation and also an evaluation based on the categories for the three tools. So let's start. Um, the first category are the creation patterns. And you can see them here uh, on the screen behind me. And as you can see, the creation patterns are very basic stuff like direct distribution to a single user in the system or role-based distribution, distribution based on the role of the user in the system. And topics like separation of duties or retain familiar. Separation of duties is something like the four eyes principle and some other patterns here. And this is a very important category with 11 workflow patterns. The second category, which you can see here behind me, um, are the push patterns. Push patterns are for the case when the workflow management system pushes the work item to the participants. And you can see here some strategies like uh, random allocation, round robin allocation, shortest queue, and things like that. So also this category is very important and has quite a number of resource patterns in it. And then we have the next category are the pull patterns. So this is when the participant pulls the work item from the workflow management system. And there are different patterns for um, allocated or offered work items. And um, things like uh, what about the work queue content? What can the participant see in the work queue? How can the participant influence the work queue content and topics like that? The next category are detour patterns. Um, detour patterns, for example, are um, when you distribute a work item, uh, let's say to a team leader, and then the team leader decides not to work himself on the work item, but to rather delegate it to another member of his team, for example. These are detour patterns. And then we have the auto start patterns. And here, um, there are just a few patterns. Uh, for example, one is piled execution. And this means that a participant um, chooses to pile all of the work items of a special task for all cases in his work list so that all of the work items come there for a certain time and this feature can be switched on and off, for example. And then uh, the next category are visibility patterns. So again, this is about who can see which work items. This is also an important question. And the last category are multiple resource patterns where you have simultaneous execution or additional resources. So 
Let's now look at the overall results of our analysis. As you can see here on the screen behind me, um, we have Exxon Ivy and Camunda, which are very close together on the first and second rank. But what you have to see also is that we are some, somewhere here between 50 and 60 percent. So the whole result is not excellent. I would say that 70 or 80 percent would be much better. And um, Bonita Soft is a little behind. You can see 45 percent here. So how does this translate to the categories that we've seen before? And here um, I have the spider diagram for you. So um, you can see that um, Axon Ivy is the blue line here. Uh, Bonita Soft is the orange line and Camunda is the gray line. Um, if you look at this, um, at this chart, uh, let's start by the creation patterns. The very, the first category, very important category. You can see that all three contestants here do not perform very well on the creation patterns. So there are some essential things lacking here. And the same holds for the push category. In the push category, all three tools have a medium performance and do not at all fulfill all of the resource patterns. In the pull uh, category, um, we have X and Ivy that is excellent here. And the other two are more in the medium range. And then we have the detour patterns um, where none of the tools really excels. Uh, the auto start patterns and then the visibility uh, patterns and the visibility patterns. Um, this is where Camunda is very good. And um, last but not least, we have the multiple resource patterns where uh, X and Ivy is good. So now you can see the topics. And if you want to dig into the details, go and get the whole report. Well, to conclude, let me first thank all the vendors who have participated here for providing us with their workflow management systems and for helping us in the forums when we had problems implementing some of the patterns. We are not affiliated with any of these vendors or sponsored by any of them. So this is a neutral study. While I'm convinced that this analysis is very important for the functional characteristics of a workflow management system. There are other functional factors as well, and also non-functional factors that we haven't covered in this video. So I would be interested to know what you think, and I would like to see your comments, especially um, if you have additional workflow management systems that we didn't cover, but that you would like us to cover. Please write them in the comments and uh, who knows, maybe we'll do another analysis based on the same methodology. Thank you for watching.